first glance, this guy looks like the rest of us. But he's different. He has X-ray vision. They say you only know a foreign language when you dream in that language. Well, I certainly dream in X-ray, yeah. As I walk down a store, like in a supermarket, I'm looking at the products on the shelf and I see those in X-ray. Nick Vizi has used his X-ray vision to create more than 4,000 works of art. He's revealed the innards of everything from insects to flowers to a Boeing 777. But there are always some hidden secrets, some hidden beauties that surprise me. And I love that about X-ray. The fact that it reveals the hidden things within, the things you can't see with the human eye. In the past, I've X-rayed a bus, I've X-rayed a plane. The scale of that is daunting and exciting to me. He's an artist with drive. And right now, he's driving his latest project, the Mini. The Victoria and Albert Museum commissioned him to do some X-ray art for their collection. And the Mini fit the bill. They're cheap, they're British, easy to get hold of. And I know it's going to make a fantastic image because they're simplified. Simplified, but not entirely simple. The major complication with the Mini is the fact that it's a three-dimensional object and we have got a two-dimensional process. Because if you were to X-ray the Mini all in one go, which is technically possible, it would actually be very, very confused. I try to break everything down, X-ray it piece by piece, get everything as beautiful as it possibly can be, and then build it back together. Nick will produce more than 500 images of every component. The X-rays are produced in his very own X-ray facility. I quite like the look of it. It's like a black box, um, simple building that hides my pleasures. A deceptively simple building. This is actually a radiation bunker. The walls are high-density concrete layered seven blocks thick. The door that separates the X-ray room from the preparation area is made of steel and lead. It weighs a ton. And the floor is a high-density concrete that absorbs radiation. The design was over-specified to manage the radiation because it's my life I'm dealing with. So there pro there's probably more concrete than you need to, to control the radiation from the equipment we're using. But it does allow me to put in a more powerful X-ray machine should I need it. The X-ray machine he uses is powerful enough. A typical X-ray in a hospital is about 100 kilovolts for 0.2 of a second. My machine goes up to 200 kilovolts, so it's only twice as powerful as the hospital machine. But what the fundamental difference is, is the amount of time for which I'm emitting the X-rays. And it's not like filming a rib bone. Different components in the car require different exposures. So on our Mini, when we are X-raying the exhaust, I expose for 120 kilovolts for five minutes. When I come to X-ray the engine block, which will be solid steel, I'll probably have to expose for something around about 200 kilovolts for eight minutes. The more thick and heavy the object, the more radiation you need. These are the mini exhaust X-rays. Every image is to scale. When I take an X-ray onto film, the image on the film is exactly the same size as the object. So everything has to be broken down into 14 by 17 inch sections. The way I normally describe it is that those are the sizes of our jigsaw puzzle. Nick turns all his X-ray films into digital files. To do that, he and his assistant scan the X-rays on this machine. After years of experimenting with different scanning processes, we stumbled across a 1980s drum scanner, which is a, a beast of a scanner, but it creates the most fantastic quality, high resolution images, much better detail than anything else we've tried. The files are imported into the computer to build the big picture. I like the fact that yeah, it's, it's not perfect, yeah, and, it's, yeah. and it's used, and it's we'll seen it just, a life, and that yeah. it's a 50-year-old you know, yeah. designer celebrating, so this... We just shouldn't... take out the scratches as and when. Yeah. I really like the feedback that I get from people around the world who applaud me for what I'm doing because it opens up everyday objects to be appreciated for the design and the ingenuity that goes into them. And with his own ingenuity, Nick is stripping back the layers of the Mini to maximum effect.